So I'm making this for November 18th, I believe is the date. No readings tomorrow and then no readings next week and no videos because it's Thanksgiving break. And then we come back and we have one week of work left, two more class meetings, but one week of readings. So only five more sets of readings and videos after today. Um, today, I say that we will review Hebrews, which simply means you guys can look over it. We've touched on uh, in Hebrews, the, the priesthood, Jesus as the high priest after the order of Melchizedek, and uh, of course, Hebrews 11, 11 1, which defines faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, the litany of saints and heroes of the Old Testament in Hebrews 11, all that kind of stuff. But today, I just want to talk about the gospel a little bit. Um, you know, one of the things that people are ignorant of is when other works of literature have biblical allusions or references to scripture. And Jesus' admonition that we should be like servants who have been placed as stewards, which is to say we've been placed as temporary um, leaders, temporarily in charge, temporarily uh, managing the assets and property of our master while he is away. You know, there's two things off the top of my head that I can think of that relate to this. You would probably know, most of you, the Lord of the Rings, where um, Denethor is a steward, but he, he doesn't want to give it up. He's a steward until the true king returns. He's just a, a temporary king who's filling the shoes of the real king. That's an allusion to these passages in Luke and to what's going on with us. I mean, that's where we are. Rush Limbaugh, who had the radio show. What a character, right? And anyway, you guys probably don't know him, but he's uh, he used to say a thing that he was Rush Limbaugh with talent on loan from God, which sounds arrogant until you realize we all are in that position. Everything we have is on loan from God, and we are stewards of it. Also, in the passages from Luke, Jesus says, you'd better watch out because your master can return at any moment, and he'd better not find you misbehaving. Ben Jonson, who was a playwright, who was a contemporary of Shakespeare's, wrote a play, The Alchemist, which is a comedy. It's kind of a farce. And it's about these uh, oh, uh, disreputable characters who have, um, while their master is gone, they've taken over his house and they've pretended to be in charge and they're running a house where all kinds of illegal activity is going on and suddenly their master shows up. Clearly, if you know the Bible as... Ben Johnson's audiences would have, you would know that that's an allusion to these parables or these images that Jesus is presenting to us in, uh, in Luke. One thing, though, in particular, I wanted to look at as I screen share. The servant who knows the master's will and does not get ready or does not do what the master wants will be beaten with many blows. If you know what your master wants and you don't do it, and then he returns you're going to really get beaten. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. From everyone who has been given, for, from everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. People who don't know what Jesus asks of us will not be held as responsible as those of us who do and who still ignore it. But you'll still suffer, even if you don't know how to behave as steward here on earth until Christ comes again. You'll still suffer, but you'll really suffer if you know and disregard what your absent master wants, to whom much 
has been given, much will be required. That means that if you have a lot of talents, if you're intelligent, if you're funny, if you're a good actor, if you're really good with kids, fill in the blank. Maybe you've got talents as an engineer or a mathematician or a teacher. If you've been given a lot, a lot will be required of you. Not just in the narrow sense of doing what Jesus wants or what your absent master has asked you to do, but in a broader sense. Because the gifts we've been given are not for our own use. Ourselves we do not owe is a line from, I believe, Twelfth Night, a Shakespeare play. Owe meaning own. Ourselves we do not own. Ourselves and our gifts and our talents are not ours. We hold them in trust. They ultimately are due to him who gave them to us. And therefore, as in the parable of the talents, they should be invested and used and not hidden or buried in the backyard or abused for our own personal selfish interests only. Anyway, that's all in Luke there. And one of the reasons I've been having you guys all semester read scripture daily and watch these videos daily, or Monday through Friday at least, is that if you do it daily, it starts to become part of you, especially if you do it for years. And if you don't, it won't. And we've been given the internet where we can access just about any Bible, any English translation of the Bible there is, especially if they're in the public domain, even if they're not, you know, and all the tools on Bible Hub and other places, much has been given to us to access and understand the word of God. And much will be required of us. Otherwise, we will be judged as the lazy, shiftless bums that we would rather be when uh, we don't try as hard.